The time is 5 o'clock. Here is the world news at 5. First, the top stories. Ogun government cultivates new cocoa plantations across the state. Gunmen return to his sherry abduct landlord kill three security guards. Emir blames endless killings in Kaduna on reluctance to punish those behind it. Strategic food reserves may be open to fight rising food prices. In foreign, UK members of parliament finally okay the process for Britain to quit EU and ECO was forced to remain in Gambia for three more months. Good evening, I am Agimario O.I. Hinan bringing you the news in detail shortly. Now the news in detail. Ogun State Government is to cultivate 5,000 hectares cocoa plantation in different parts of the state as part of moves to create new jobs in the state. Agriculture Commissioner Mrs. Adipiju Adibaju, who made this known at the National Youth Convention in Abuja, asked youths in the state to form themselves into cooperative societies to participate in the program. She also urged the youth to take advantage of the various intervention schemes, such as CBN Anchor Borrower Program and those of the Bank of Industry and Bank of Agriculture. The commissioner was concerned that only 10% of an estimated 7 million residents of the state are taking advantages in agro-allied business. She particularly identified youth as not showing interest in agriculture programs that would enable them to take advantage of the arable lands provided by the state government. Some of the youths who spoke at the program asked the state government to improve the study of agriculture in the state public institutions, empower them to go into agriculture and help clear thick forests which could be used for farming among others. Governor Ibikulia Mosun speaking at the program said the state government was still facing the challenge of clearing thick forests for agricultural use in the state despite investing up to 1 billion naira on the project that the state would procure machinery for clearing more forests for farming in the state. Governor Ibikulia Moussa of Ogun State has approved the year 2015 promotion of teaching and non-teaching staff of the State Universal Basic Education Board, SUBER. The board acting secretary at Disoji Adeliye in the release says those promoted include 5,624 primary school teachers and 204 non-teaching staff. Also, over 64.6 million naira has been approved as year 2015 bonus for both teaching and non-teaching staff of the board. Suburb Chairman Alhaji Olatunde Okewale says the promotion letters will be released immediately to the beneficiaries. Gunmen have returned to Isheri community on the Lagos state border with Ogun State of the Lagos Ibadan Expressway. The gunmen invaded the Isheri Northeast Estate on Wednesday night, abducting the Secretary of the State, Dayo Adekoya. The gunmen, who shot sporadically for several hours, also killed three other security guards attempting to prevent them from escaping with a kidnapped landlord. Recently, a group of gunmen also abducted students and staff of Nigeria Turkish International College, also in Isheri, and several landlords about two months earlier. Governor Akimu Miyambode of Lagos State just last week signed into law a bill prescribing a maximum of death penalty for convicted kidnappers in the state. Protesting workers have staged a nationwide rally calling on the federal government to create policies that will reduce their suffering and improve their living standard. In Lagos, the workers carrying placards marched from Yaba through Ikorodu Road, chanting solidarity songs to the state government secretariat at Alausa, Ikeja, and delivered their message to the state governor. The protest was organized by the Nigeria Labour Congress, NLC, and Trade Union Congress of Nigeria, TUC. NLC Vice President Amechi Asugwani said workers had intermittently appealed to the government to make changes that would impact positively on people. Also speaking at the Lagos rally, former president of Performing Musician Association of Nigeria, PMAN, 
Charles Oputa, popularly called Charlie Boy, asked Nigerians to respect the giants of all rallies in the next two months during which all businesses will be shut down. Emir of Kano al Haji Sanusi Muhammad II has said that killing in southern Kaduna will continue until government musters enough courage to punish people behind the crisis. The traditional ruler says it is disturbing to find people who had been living together peacefully for decades now killing themselves over the issue of settlers and indigents. The Emir speaking in Abuja at the police award presentation to Governor Yaya Bello of Kogi State as the most security conscious governor blames the law enforcement agencies for allowing the killings to continue. He recalled that whenever there was crisis in the southern Kaduna, people were killed and government commissioned an investigative panel which identified those behind the killings. The refusal of the government to punish those identified in the past report, according to the Emir, is responsible for the reprisal attacks, which continues to escalate the crisis in southern Kaduna. Governor Abubakar Bello of Niger State says most of the teachers in the state public primary and secondary schools are not qualified. According to the governor, more than a half of the teachers used fake certificates to secure teaching jobs in the state school system. The governor, speaking while receiving members of the board of directors of Bida Emirates Education Forum at the government house in Mina, attributed the mass failure recorded by the state in examinations conducted by National Examination Council NECO and West African Examination Council WAEC on such unqualified teachers. He directed the education ministry to rid the school system of such teachers while promising a new salary scheme to retain teachers with valid certificate. The presidency is considering opening up the strategic food reserve to force down the rising price of food in the country. Agriculture Minister Chief Aldo Ogbe, who announced the move to the State House correspondent after the meeting of the Federal Executive Council in Abuja, says the food reserve will be opened up in the next few weeks if the food price continues to rise. The minister says the country is not facing food shortage, while another bumper harvest is expected at the end of March. Ogbe explains that government intends to deploy railway wagon to assist farmers in transporting the produce to reduce the high cost of food, which the Presidential Committee on Food Price blamed largely on multiple taxes being collected from food trucks and highways by local government. He also says that the Ivory Coast model in which truck carrying food are labeled and cannot be stopped on highways for more than 10 minutes will be adopted in transporting food to market. You're still listening to the World News at 5 from Rock City, 11.9 FM. Up next, we'll bring you foreign business and sport news. Please stay with us. On the foreign scene, members of parliament have overwhelmingly agreed to let the government begin the UK's departure from the EU as they voted for the Brexit bill. The draft legislation was approved by 494 votes to 122 and now moves to the House of Lords. Shadow Business Secretary Clyde Lewis was one of 52 Labour members of Parliament to defy party orders to back the bill and he resigned from the front bench. Prime Minister Theresa May wants to trigger formal Brexit talks by the end of March by invoking Article 50 of the Lisbon Treaty which requires Parliament's permission before doing so. Labour Party leader Jeremy Corbyn said he understood the difficulties the bill presented some of his members of Parliament but said they had been ordered to back the Article 50 because the party would not block Brexit. The U.S. Senate has confirmed President Donald Trump's nomination for Attorney General Alabama Senator Jeff Sessions by a vote of 52 to 47. The confirmation follows a series of divisive hearings during which Democrats attacked Mr. Sessions' record on civil rights. Democrat Elizabeth Warren was silenced after recalling historic allegations of racism against Mr. Sessions. Mr. Trump also lashed out on Twitter at Democrats stalling his cabinet picks, including Mr. Sessions, who is only the sixth of Mr. Trump's 15 nominees to be confirmed. 
The mandate of a West African military operation that forced Gambia's longtime leader Yaya Jamey to step down and flee into exile has been extended by three months. The office of new president Adama Barrow said the standby force, ECOMIC, has integrated itself into the security and military fabric of the country. A senior United Nations official said late last month that Barrow had requested that the 7,000 troops strong ECOWAS force mandate be extended by six months. ECOWAS troops quickly crossed into Gambia from Senegal, giving mediators the necessary leverage to negotiate Jamey's departure. Now in business. Lottery agents and employees have expressed concern over the deteriorating supply of electricity. General Secretary of the Lagos State Chapter of the National Union of Lottery Agents and Employees, Mr. Latunde Gregory, in an interview with Rock City FM says that erratic supply of electricity is a major challenge to the lottery business. Gregory explains that lottery operation requires a 24-hour power supply to energize lottery equipment. Lottery business, according to him, is one of the highest employers of labor and has the potentials to generate huge revenue like crude oil export. For instance, Gregory says 30 billion naira was recently generated from lottery business and proceeds used to buy sporting equipment for primary schools nationwide. Finally, Spot News. Nigeria have moved up to the 42nd position in the latest FIFA Global Rankings. The Super Eagles were ranked 51st in January rankings, but this month they moved a staggering nine places up despite their absence at the Africa Cup of Nations staged in Gabon. Even at this leap, they are seventh in Africa behind Egypt, Senegal, Cameroon, Tunisia, Congo DR, and Burkina Faso. The indomitable Lions of Cameroon, who defeated the Ferris to win their fifth African title, climbed up 29th place to occupy number 33 in the world, though third in Africa. Argentina led the world ranking with 1,635 points, followed closely by cross-country rivals Brazil in second and reigning world champions Germany in third place. That was the world news at five, and just before we go, the major stories once again. Ogun government cultivated new cocoa plantations across the state. Gunmen returned to Isheri, abducted landlord, killed three security guards. Emir blamed endless killings in Kaduna on reluctance to punish those behind it. Strategic food reserves might be opened to fight rising food prices. In foreign, we reported that UK members of parliament finally okayed the process for Britain to quit EU and also ECOWAS forced to remain in Gambia for three more months. For more stories and to listen to us live, please log on to our website www.rockcityfmradio.com forward slash live. Thank you so much for listening. Good evening. I am. Aguimario O. I. Hinnett.